1991 Supercharged Sandbar Super Deluxe. <laughs> so this is just the Super Sandbar. How about that? KS4K truck doesn't have a tack. I don't believe any of the trucks have tacks. But the Sandbar vans or the Tri, I believe they have factory tachometers in the cluster. Once again, I'm using Mr. Subaru 1387. He has a wonderful video on how to wire up this tachometer. Unfortunately, everything else works, but the signal wire for the tack is terminated at the coil itself. So here we're gonna have to take a look and see if we can run a wire. Just to make things easier, the sandbar's motor is all the way in the back. We have to go to the rear of the sandbar and open up the rear access panel. We're going to locate the ignition coil and its resistor. I took to the Japanese mini truck forum and thankfully, after hours of searching for this wire, found that this yellow wire terminates at a rubber plug and doesn't even go into the wiring harness for the engine or the ECU. This connection is super sketchy. You're going to have to use some picks and be super crafty not to damage this. But it did eventually come out. Now you have to remove that rubber plug and add a wire. Add it so that it actually matches up with the pin that's inside the resistor's end. I had 24 feet of this 14 gauge red wire laying around, so I guess I was gonna use it. I made my own wiring harness and plugged it into the port where there was nothing. Luckily, I got one of those few nice days before winter and I was able to get outside and show exactly how to wire this thing up. Here's how you do it. I found the main engine harness that runs up the right side of the frame from the rear of the car. Now if you want to be really trick, you can open up that main engine harness and put this wire inside of it. That might be done at a later date, but for now, you can take this harness off where the grommet is. This feeds the main engine harness. You should see that wire after taking the two 12 millimeters off the front seat. It should be laying right there if you poked it up enough. Just make sure you patch that grommet up so no water gets into this wire loom. That's basically your ECU for your fuel injection, so you don't want to get any of that wet. The rest of the wiring is going to depend on the gauge you get, where you put the gauge, what tachometer you get, if you get a shift light or not. You're going to have to wire in different things like illumination. This was a very simple three-wire gauge. It's always lit up, it's digital, and it's I wanted it simple like that. Head over to Mr. Subaru 1387's video for the tachometer for the sandbar, and that shows you exactly how to wire up your illumination, your constant 12 volt, ground it, all that jazz. I followed that and it simply works. Yeah, it's coming along, people. It's coming along. I mean, many, many modifications already. Just fun stuff. Oh, happy holidays, y'all. Whatever your holiday is. Oh, ow, that hurt. Whatever, whatever creator you celebrate, hopefully we're all celebrating the same one. We just don't even know it. But uh, yeah, man, have a great holiday this year. Let's take this sucker out. Mini truck, mini truck, mini truck. And you don't disappoint, do you? You don't, you don't disappoint. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Finally, after hours of hard work, hours, we found the tax signal and why it wasn't hooked up. And you can see why right here, this gauge cluster from the factory, don't mind the check engine light, it's because our code 33 isn't sensing that the VSS is working so that it doesn't sense that it's spinning. But yeah, no tack here, no factory tack, just that little supercharger. 
a little dead supercharger. It does nothing, nothing. There's zero lights in there. I took the cluster out. Nothing's in there. 1991 Subaru sandbars do not have the supercharger light. I guess the older ones did. So now we've got our tack in place there. I guess you could place the tack inside the cluster, but I don't want to mess with what's behind the cluster circuit wise. mini truck madness coming at you up in Poughkeepsie here at the Harbor Freight well was all right let's put this window up let's get into some crazy ass action out on route 9 no probably not but it's a, what is it, a Thursday night out on Route 9. I don't think it's going to be all that eventful, but we're going to bring you along because it's a mini truck. Uh, which way should we go? Which way should we go? Which way should we go? It's so weird going over speed bumps. Because like the axle's right under you, so you don't know when you're over the speed bump or not. It's freaking weird. Tasty crab, yo. Where is that coming from? I hear sirens. I hear sirens. But where are they coming from? So we buzzed Subaru.
Got a buzz made Hudson Subaru when you drive by. Recording, we gotta do it once, right? We gotta get a, give it a little fourth gear razzle dazzle. Let's do a crazy ass downshift. amount of time but it's just it's fun it's fun but this isn't a race car remember if you do that all the time with this thing don't don't expect it you know to last you very long yeah hold on when you get up to like 55 miles an hour and you're in fifth gear you can just put your foot a little bit on wow the supercharger yes yes oh my god that's guys that was 60 something miles an hour the supercharger was freaking choochin that was amazing well everyone, I hope you're enjoying the sandbar content as much as I am. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. One of the silliest cars, trucks, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever owned. Okay? I cannot wait for the snow in this thing. We're going to bring you along. We're going to drift it. We're going to hoon it. It's going to be great. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.